Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In last week's episode, we finished prepping the engine bay for paint. I still have to sand down this corner, but I'm not gonna do that on camera because that'll be a little bit repetitive of the last two episodes. So I'll do that off camera, and the next time we will be working on the engine bay, we will be bondoing and primering. I'm just waiting for those parts to come in the mail. They haven't got here yet. Now, before we get into what we're doing in this week's episode, Last week, I ended the video saying that I had a bit of a surprise for you guys, and so I wanted to show you guys that surprise. Say hello to my 1990 Mazda Miata. So this thing is incredibly clean. It has never been modified. It has never been tracked. It was never lowered. This is a as close as I possibly could purchase to a collector Miata. The paint is in wonderful condition. Obviously the wheels are stock, the tires are stock. So there's two reasons I've purchased this. One, because I've always wanted to own a Mazda Miata. They're so cute. And two, because this Mazda Miata has 35,000 miles on it. So this is literally a collector Miata. It has AC, power windows, it's the full package. And so you're probably thinking, oh crap, like 35,000 miles, this car is super clean, it's all stock, how much did you pay? Well, that's the thing. I paid $5,500 for it. And if anyone knows anything about Mazda Miatas, it's that they sell for so much more than that with this low miles. So the reason I got it for so cheap is it has a few little things wrong with it. The main thing being that it has hail damage on the trunk and hood. And now the hail damage is only on the trunk and the hood. I guess the metal on the hood and the trunk are thinner than the rest of the body because there are no dents on the rest of the car. It's only on the hood and the trunk. So one of these days I will be doing not a full restoration on it, just bringing it back to that collector status, you know, fixing the hood, fixing the trunk, giving it what it needs to be that collector car again. I will show you guys all the little things it has wrong with it in a whole nother video another time. But for right now, we're gonna focus on the Datsun. I'm not gonna be making videos on the Miata anytime soon. It's something that I'll probably do, you know, next year sometime. I just had to jump on that offer. You know, you don't find Miatas with 35,000 miles with that condition for $5,500. All right, now to get on to what we're doing in this episode. Oh my God, my finger's blocking. Now to get on to what we're doing in this episode, we are taking out the forbidden, oh, what's it called? We are taking out the forbidden sound dampeners. So most cars have this rubber material that is glued on to the sheet metal on the floors of the car. And in this car, it's glued here. You can see it's all glued here. It's glued in the back here. And so this material is incredibly difficult to remove. So here's a spatula, and we're just gonna try to remove some just so I can show you how awful this material is. I mean, you seriously, there's nothing. It does not come off. Okay, here, here's a cracked piece. We'll go under here. So that piece came off nicely. But like, so you get the point. It's really, really stuck. So there are three popular ways to remove the sound deadener from the floors of the car. The first one is the one I briefly showed you guys, which is using a spatula and taking 5,000 years to get through all of it. The second popular way of removing it is using a heat gun. And now you just apply the heat gun thoroughly throughout all of it and you pull it all off and it kind of turns into this hot and gooey mess. Now that works and it works good, but it leaves a lot of that industrial strength glue on the body. And so then you have to use chemicals to get the glue off. So that's time consuming and costly. So the third and most efficient way to remove the sound deadener from the floors of the body is by using dry ice. And that's what we're gonna be doing in today's episode. But before we start that, a little tribute to my man, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Brad builds the science guy. Dots. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna take our blocks of dry ice, we're gonna mash them up as fine as possible, and we're gonna pour a bunch of rubbing alcohol in there. Rubbing alcohol's freezing point is about negative 128 Fahrenheit. Dry ice's temperature is about negative 120. So it won't freeze, it'll just kind of be a liquid form of dry ice and rubbing alcohol at roughly negative 120 Fahrenheit. 
So we're gonna take that concoction and then we're gonna pour it on top of the sound deadener and leave it there for about a couple minutes. And supposedly we're gonna start hearing it cracking and kind of popping off the metal. So to start off, there's just some quick safety precautions when dealing with dry ice. It's extremely cold, literally freeze your hands. Hunters use it to instantly freeze their meat. So don't touch it with your bare hands, use a pair of gloves. The other thing is it is CO2, it's carbon dioxide. So you need to have proper ventilation. If you don't and you just inhale it, well then your body's not inhaling oxygen and you'll just pass out. And if the whole room's full of carbon dioxide, then maybe you'll die. So don't do that, that would suck. I don't want you to die. Now we're gonna grab some dry ice. So this entire cooler of dry ice, this is 60 pounds of dry ice. I probably got way more than I possibly need, but this whole entire cooler was only $36. Now we're gonna grab our hammer and mash it up. Now some amazing 299 value rubbing alcohol. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but it's like bubbling. All right, so now we have our concoction made. We're gonna do this back area first, this little square. And so what I've seen other people do, you just pour it on. Now, supposedly, we're gonna start hearing it cracking. All right, so now we're gonna try prying it off. So these are the pieces of sound deadener. They all came off in these massive chunks. By the way, this is what my pot looks like now. This is insane. I mean, you guys saw how just crappy the spatula was working on this, and now it's just coming off in full friggin' pieces. Kind of hard to see with all this. But watch. I'm like not even pushing. All right, so this process is working beautifully. It is taking off the sound deadener insanely fast. Um, I have almost the entire driver's side floor taken apart. After I have this corner done, I'm gonna shovel out all the dry ice so that I can show you guys what this side looks like versus that side and kind of give you guys a comparison. And then we'll get to doing the rest of it. All right, so we finished up one side and I cleared out all the rest of the dry ice so that we can clearly see what the ground looks like without all the fog. Some of this metal literally has no rust on it. That is seriously amazing. Up here, I found there's a couple little holes, but they're super tiny. I mean, absolutely tiny besides that there's nothing i mean there was some rust under here but it didn't go through anywhere this will all be able to be cleared out it's a lot easier to see this massive dent over here from when they were moving the car with the forklift we're gonna bash that down with a hammer eventually and here's all the bits a lot of it came out in these huge pieces this was so much easier than using a spatula now the pieces we have left are all of this on the side pieces in the trunk here that need to come out on the floor here and then on the side here and then there's some pieces up top. Now we're gonna move on to getting it off the walls here. All right, so my idea for this is we're gonna pour the dry ice into the box and then we're 
we're gonna hold the box against the areas where it needs to be held. So the box method is not working very well. It is just, I feel like not enough contacts being made. So we're going to try putting it into a plastic bag and then holding the plastic bag against it. Alright, so now the bag way is not working as great as just kind of pouring it on the ground where it was just like popping off. And now I'm kind of having to like chisel it off a little bit. It's still coming off in huge chunks, but it's not coming off as good as it was before. There's really no other way to get it off the side though. So I'm going to continue doing this. I kind of have, I have two bags going right now. And then I just kind of clip them on to whatever is available and then make sure they're pushed up against the sound deadener. So I'm going to do that to the rest of the wall here and then we'll move on to the top. and switching sides. I just finished up on the floor here, and this is probably the most amount of rust I've seen on this entire car, right in the passenger side. Maybe the passenger in this car was a messy eater or something. But still no holes. I don't think there's even, oh, there's actually a hole right there. That's the only hole I'm seeing though. Most of this is solid. I mean, who knows how solid it is with this amount of rust. But I'm only seeing one hole, so that's a good sign. Other than that though, the floors are looking good still. Quick note, the bag method is working and it's working just as good as putting the ice directly on the metal. I know that because I did that here. I did the bag method in the back here and all the sound deadener came up really easily. It's just the sides. The sides for some reason are glued a lot harder than it was down here, I'm not sure why. I like the bag method a lot more too, just, just because it's easier to record. Putting the ice directly on the metal creates a lot of fog as you guys have seen. All right, now let's time-lapse this.
Now the sound deadener is completely removed from the front part of the interior. The last part is the rear. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna redo any of this back here, but I'm already removing it and I already have a bunch of dry ice, so I might as well remove it back here too. I'm hoping since it's on the floor, it comes off as easy as it did on the floor up there. And now it is complete. There was some fresh rust starting here and a little bit here. I don't know if you guys saw, but in the first episode in this series, I think it's the first, maybe it's the second, there was a whole entire puddle of water here. I mean, water was almost up to the top here. I had to pull the spare tire out of this like pond. But the water was there most likely because it was leaking from the seals on the hatch and water must've gotten there as well. I was almost gonna leave the sound deadener back here because I didn't see any rust and it looked really solid. So I'm really glad that I took this off because this could have been a problem later on. Here is the entire box of sound deadener. It's pretty big. Probably weighs uh, maybe like 15, 15, 20 pounds of sound deadener. I mean, it's a pretty big box. It looks a lot smaller when it's all plastered around everywhere. We also have a bit of dry ice left. There are one, two, three, four blocks left. I think each block is like five pounds. So if you're thinking about doing an entire car, like a coupe, like mine, 40 to 50 pounds is probably perfect. So in this episode, we cleared out all the sound deadener. Um, I called it sound dampener at different points, but it's called the sound deadener. I just fumble my words a lot. So sound deadener is what it's called. So I think the dry ice method was a success. Um, it didn't work too well in certain parts. It worked great on the floorboards. I would definitely recommend it to anybody who's doing a restoration of their own. It's definitely cheap. I mean, 36 bucks for 60 pounds of dry ice is not expensive at all. Just make sure you wear protection. Well, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one.